So I've been thinking about something. Um, I had a situation um, recently where um, a, a friend, someone who I considered a friend, uh, deeply disappointed me um, and injured me in, in, in some way. And um, my immediate reflex is uh, to cut people off. Like, I am really, 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 really good. Um, too good, actually, with acting like <laughs> you never existed to me. Um, and so that was my reflex. That's what I did. Like, uh, I'm done with you. Like, <laughs> you're dead to me, um, kind of thing. Um, and it was a reflex. And after my ego quieted, I started to, to, to distill what actually happened versus what I felt happened. And sometimes our feelings, while they are authentic, they might not always be correct or complete. And so I needed to, to really think about, well, why is this bothering me? the way it is and why did I why did I respond this way and what I realized was I learned how to do that and we learn how to do that as a way to survive somewhere early on in our lives and I can pick out a few occasions where people made promises People who I trusted um, either didn't come through or they totally lied to me, betrayed me um, even. And so in order to survive, I needed to push away from them in that situation. And I did that by totally focusing in on what was ahead of me and forgetting whatever happened and just go on. And I am, I, I am too good at it. And what I discovered at this point in my life is that I don't like that about me. I realized that when I learned how to do it, I had to do it because you realize nobody's gonna look out for you like you're gonna look out for you. And so I need to do what I need to do in order to move ahead. But what I thought about was, I am well into my 40s now. And I was doing that back in my 20s. I learned how to do that very early in my life. And I was like, well, if, if I was doing that in my 20s and I'm still doing it in my 40s, it just seemed really immature. I felt really small. And I, challenged myself and asked myself, well, is, is this a choice that I'm making or is this just muscle memory? Is it just a reflex? And this is just how I, instinctively I know how to survive emotionally is to just, and, and mentally, is just to cut that off, you know, and move forward. And I, I can be a fatalist in some ways. That's me personally. Like, if the doctor comes to me and say, um, you know, Patrick, your left arm is killing you, um, and we need to amputate it. I'm the kind of person that says, do you, do you want me to get the knife or you want to do it? Because if it needs to go, it needs to go. And I need to learn how to, you know, use my other arm, what I have left. So let's just get to the point, right? Even, you know, so much as, you know, when my, my, my father transitioned, and he was on life support a little less than a week. My instincts with my brothers and my conversations with them were like, well, if, if the doctor's saying he's not here anymore and there's nothing left to be done, then let's let him go. If, if he needs to, to journey on or if he's already gone on that journey, then we, let's, just, let's just do this. Like this, pull the plug, quote unquote. Um, and if there is pain to be experienced, then I want to start getting through it. That is just kind of 
the focus that, you know, I learned how to have to go forward. Let's deal with whatever we need to deal with. Decision made, moving on. But I, I realize at this age, at this, not just age, but this space of where my heart and my mind is, is that while that was useful for me then, that just doesn't serve me now. It does, it's not a flex. It's not anything to be proud of. It's, it's not anything to brag about. And I say it because life will take from you things without your permission. feels like, you know, sometimes life is just snatching this away and that away and people away. And it does it because life is ever evolving, ever changing. And, and, and that, that's natural. But I, I don't want my life in my own head, in my own interior life. I don't want to live with the idea that my life is just an accumulation of things that I lost, relationships that I used to have, love that I used to have, um, closeness that I used to have with, with people. If life is going to do that on its own and I have to adjust to that, then I want to be able to plant seeds in my life where even if we have to redefine and rearrange our relationship and our proximity to one another, I would rather keep that alive than to say, well, you know, you're alive, but I'm gonna act like you did to me. Um, the way my life is opening up in very intentional ways, when I say intentional, I made decisions for the trajectory where I want my life to go and what I want to see happen in my life. Um, I had learned to avoid emotional pain by being distant, not making connections, or when I felt like I could make a connection, sometimes I wasn't courageous enough. It was never about love. It was just fear had a hold of me and, and I refuse to make connections because you don't want to be hurt. You don't want to be disappointed. Um, but I, I, I've also been thinking about how safety is such an illusion. What's what's safety? How how can we love and do anything of consequence and meaningful in a safe way? We can get in the car and put on our seat belts. I can be as safe as, as possible, but that doesn't mean life is as safe as possible. It doesn't mean some other driver isn't as safe as possible. That, that in all actuality, safety is an illusion. We have it, we kind of create it to create comfort for ourselves, but Really, you can reach out to somebody. You don't know if they're gonna reach back. You can love someone. It doesn't mean that they're going to love you back. And that's okay. Because I, I, I think that we are most alive, not in what we attain, but what we, we strive for. It is in the reaching where beautiful things happen. And if our fear arrests our ability to even try, do something new, go here, go there. Some of you may have heard this, or maybe not. A couple of years ago, when I decided to, you know, go to to DC and study or whatever, it was the craziest stupidest it did not make sense on some level and then in some ways for me it made all the sense in the world and I remember getting on a plane it was at night some late flight packed up you know my whatever I was taking with me and 
when I go to DC to study. I remember being on the plane and thinking like, this is crazy. <laughs> what am I doing? This is nuts. This is crazy. And I was so scared. But I did it anyway. I rational, I rationalized that. What if I go and this all blows up in my face? What if I go there, I'm not as smart as I thought I was and, and I, I couldn't hang and confirmed, you know, those voices and insecurity that I had that I, I couldn't I couldn't compete on this level. I said to myself, if I find that out about myself, I'll come home and I'll have people in my life who love me, whether I achieve something or not. They'll nurse my wounds and wipe my tears and get me back to health and I'll do something else. If, if you reach for someone and they don't reach back, that shouldn't let you inhibit yourself or keep yourself from reaching out to someone else because it is in that space where we are most alive. And I just realized like, if I don't plant seeds that are life giving in my life, then I am going to live the rest of my life remembering old love, old relationships, and remembering, you know, good times the way they used to be and not realizing that I can have some more good times. I can never replace the people that I've lost. I can never replace times that I've spent and wonderful, amazing people that I've known that are not here anymore. Um, and yet that doesn't have to be the end of my story and I don't have to live the rest of my life. Um, reminiscing about good times or bad times. And so maturity is, for me at least, that, okay, that hurt your feelings. Feelings been hurt before. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's okay. We can, we can, redefine our space, we can reconfigure, we can rearrange the furniture in the room whereby we can still be connected to one another, even if that connection is different. And if I don't do that, then that, that tool that I had to cut people off and um, that becomes toxic to me and it will spoil my life. And I would live life being most miserable um, in my own head about people that have wronged me or people that moved away or people that transitioned away. And I just don't want my life filled with sadness like that. I've lived with a lot of sadness. I'm always sad. I think there's a different way of being. And so at some point for all of us, we have to put down our weapons and understand that vulnerability is really the entryway into everything that we want. I, I, I had a goal when I left Chicago to go study in DC. And I had to feel that fear. I had to feel that vulnerability. I had to feel that angst and push past it anyway. And it worked out wonderful. And I, I, I am in a space in my life where I'm thinking, well, if I did that with that, that and I had success, what would happen if I, if I used that same mechanism and I planted it somewhere else in my life? What, what could grow? Who could I evolve into? Who could I be instead of some teenager that got his feelings hurt and 
receded into a shell and really never came out again. If you think about it, sometimes perhaps days pass and we haven't lived into them because we do nothing with the days that we have. We don't live in them. And I, I know I I know it's difficult. I know it's challenging. And I know like I have to rewire myself and essentially evolve into someone I don't recognize. Right? Who I was served me then. That St. Patrick doesn't give me life going forward. And so I have to learn myself all over again. I have to learn new ways of communicating and new ways of feeling vulnerability and pushing past it and, and maybe using more words to, to redefine proximities and relationships to people whereby we could still be in fellowship and in friendship with one another and keep our souls knitted even if there needs to be some distance there. I don't have to act like <laughs> people are, are, are dead to me in order for me to survive anymore. It has been exhausting. It's always been exhausting. You have to do it on purpose and, and having that energy in our lives coursing through our workspace, our family life, our friendships, is just a lot. And I, I just, for me, I would rather try to be different than to keep reliving and reflexing in ways that just don't serve me anymore. That's what I've been thinking about. I want to hear your story. If, if you can relate, if you've been thinking about the same, same things, if you can add to this conversation, I, I'd like, I'd like to, to hear what you think about it. Reach out to me on social media, um, on the post, um, and let's, let's, let's share. Um, let's share our evolution and our growth with one another. All right.